Monday's case count is higher than Sunday's which saw 4,250 new infections. On Saturday, 4,350 new cases were recorded. It is also the sixth day in a row cases are above 4,000. All other local public health units reported fewer than 200 new cases in the provincial report. The death toll in the province has risen to 7,735 as 19 more deaths were recorded. Ontario reported a record 2,202 people are hospitalized with COVID-19, up by 95 from the previous day, with an all-time high of 755 patients in intensive care units, up by 14, and 516 patients in ICUs on a ventilator, up by 10. Active cases in Ontario now stand at 42,863, up from the previous day when it was at 41,588 and up from April 12 when it was at 34,758. At the peak of the second wave coronavirus surge in January, active cases hit just above 30,000. The seven-day average has now reached 4,348, up from yesterday at 4,341, and is up from last week at 3,782. A month ago, the seven-day average was around 1,500. The government said 42,873 tests were processed in the last 24 hours. There is currently a backlog of 21,512 tests awaiting results. A total of 13,576,030 tests have been completed since the start of the pandemic. Test positivity for Monday was 10.5%, the highest so far between the second and third waves. That figure is up from Sundays at 9.2%, and is up from last week when it was 9.5%. As of 8pm on Sunday, a total of 3,904,778 COVID-19 vaccine doses have been administered. That marks an increase of 66,897 vaccines in the last day, the lowest number of vaccines administered in two weeks. There are 346,005 people fully vaccinated with two doses. Pfizer BioNTech, Moderna, Oxford AstraZeneca and Johnson and Johnson are the vaccines currently approved in Canada. The first 3 require 2 shots administered several weeks apart while the fourth requires only 1. J&J &J vaccines have not yet arrived in Canada. Officials have listed breakdown data for the new VOCs variants of concern detected so far in the province which consist of the B1.1.7 first detected in the United Kingdom, B1.351 first detected in South Africa, P.1, first detected in Brazil, as well as mutations that have no determined lineage. The B1.1.7 VOC is currently the dominating known strain at 36,579 variant cases, which is up by 2,467 since the previous day, 104 B1.351 variant cases which is unchanged, and 211 P.1 variant cases which is up by 4. Here is a breakdown of the total cases in Ontario by gender and age, 209,133 people are male, an increase of 2,221 cases, 209,716 people are female, an increase of 2,149 cases, 63,718 people are 19 and under, an increase of 897 cases, 154,763 people are 20 to 39 an increase of 1,600 cases, 121,368 people are 40 to 59, an increase of 1,319 cases, 58,684 people are 60 to 79, an increase of 557 cases, 22,803 people are 80 and over, an increase of 75 cases. The province notes that not all cases have a reported age or gender. Here is a breakdown of the total deaths related to COVID-19 by age. Deaths reported in ages 19 and under, 2 deaths reported in ages 20 to 39 to 43, plus 1 deaths reported in ages 40 to 59 to 346, plus 5 deaths reported in ages 60 to 79 to 2240, plus 5 deaths reported in ages 80 and older, 5103, plus 8. The province notes there may be a reporting delay for deaths and data corrections or updates can result in death records being removed. According to the Ministry of Long-Term Care, there have been 3,750 deaths reported among residents and patients in long-term care homes across Ontario which five deaths were removed from the tally. Eleven virus-related deaths in total have been reported among staff. There are 40 current outbreaks in homes, which is up by one from the previous day.
The ministry also indicated there are currently 36 active cases among long-term care residents and 127 active cases among staff, up by four and up by three, respectively, in the last day.